Hey there fellow Narragators, uh, it's going to be a short video here. I just want to talk a little bit about the mechanical packing on 58. Um, as you know, we've had this offbeat exhaust problem. I was looking in the direction of valve timing. We did uh, looked at the valve timing and because of that reversed the uh, orientation of the Johnson bar, which actually had a, had a bit of a difference. And, you know, the idiot that restored the locomotive put the Johnson bar on backwards. Uh-oh. Um, so, <laughs> once I figured it out by verifying the photographs and all that, I spun it around and um, actually that helped things out quite a bit. So, um, having the offbeat exhaust and I'm thinking, you know, I wonder if it's not valve timing as much as it is just that cylinder is not developing pressure because it's all being blown out through the packing. So I tore this apart to look at it. Now let's let's identify what we have here for um, for components. So starting all the way in, you have this spring, all right, and it fits in the head. Then you have this ground. Uh, metal uh, washer and it's it's got a ground surface on it then you have the actual packing itself and in here are two pieces of babbitt that are ha like half moons and then each one has a flat spring behind it and then on the other side you have two more oriented 90 degrees and it's it was, this is called a Paxton Mitchell packing and it was designed so that as it wears the springs will keep pushing it in and it'll 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 continue to hug the uh, uh, the rod and and not you know not wear a uh, wear a gap in between and then you've got this steel collar on the outside all right then you have this other ground washer um, and then here's here's another little brass washer and then the uh, the stuffing box or I guess the cap you'd call it then another brass washer and then you and then you have these two ropes of uh, cotton and then another brass brass washer and then you got the brass piece that goes on the outside what what this what all this does here is it, it, it it's a lubricator so you put oil into here it soaks into the cotton uh, rope and then that just you know meters out oil to the rod itself and how this works is that This packing of course is hugging the piston rod. All right, so it's not going to let any steam pass by however steam is on the outside of it and uh, Because you've got these These washers here and you have the spring pushing all this against the cap uh, it it makes it so steam that's on the outside of this can't get between the gap here between this washer and the cap to to work its way around and get out um, <clears throat> and then you know because this rod will move a little bit up and down back and forth a little, not supposed to but it will because there's clearance between the uh, the piston and the uh, cylinder itself and so that this piston will move around a little bit so you want to be able to to accommodate that and that's what this arrangement does however now i put this back together the way that jnl had it but as I, when i tore this apart to look at it i thought you know i wonder if this little ring here okay and it doesn't really it's not ground it's not flat it's just a piece of brass stock that they uh that they made out and put in here I wonder if this is the cause of the problem because instead of this ground surface being touching a, the back of this ground surface in the cup you got this little thing in the way and I'm I just have this feeling that the steam is coming around passing between this surface and that surface because of this and getting out so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this out of here and get rid of this and I'm going to put this all back together, and the next time we fire up, see if it makes a difference. The other thing I'm going to do is between the cap and the back of the head um, is a gasket. Okay, and I reuse the original gasket from, uh, God knows, 1940-whatever. Um, and um, so I ordered new gasket material, and I'm going to trim it and then put this in, in here instead. 
Um, now, how do how do you do that? This is all together here. So you've got the you know you got the key in. I'm not going to tear us all apart to get all these you know put this in. Well, what they did kind of ingenious. They did a little tongue and groove joint so that you could just pass this over the rod and stick it in place. I'm going to do the same thing with the new piece. Um, so that's that's what I plan to do. I'm going to make a new gasket. I'm going to get rid of this here, put all this back together, and the next time we fire up we're going to see if this makes a difference. And if it does, then I know the source, the source of our problem. Now we're still going to do the indicator setup and all that, um, and uh, see how well, how well you know the, the timing is. But I think this is going to make a huge difference. And um, you know, it, it, if uh, if this works out all right, then I think we may have had our fix. If not, well, at least we'll have uh, eliminated one major problem. Uh, I, I have put put out feelers to um, to a company that makes mechanical packing uh, about replacing these and getting um, new mecha mechanical packing made so I'm waiting for their engineer to send me the drawings that they're putting together on this application and uh, also the pricing and see what it's going to cost um, what I might do is you, you, you can see in here I mean we had these these rods were um, were machined <clears throat> to take all the, the rust and everything off before we put them on. Well, you see a little bit of pitting up in here. That that just came from the engine sitting over the winter with some water. You know, this probably sat with the, the, the piston rod up in here. A little bit of water or something was in there keeping it moist and it pitted. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's some people that take these and then they hard chrome them. And then they put a kind of a satin finish on there because you don't want it too bright. If, if, if it's too shiny and smooth, then this packing will never seat itself and it'll always leak. What you want is, is a hard chrome that's kind of got a, a little bit of a somewhat rough finish so that this will, will um, polish itself into, and, and wear in. Uh, so if you do that, though you get rid of this. You'll never have any pitting. This, this won't corrode anymore and it'll stay, you know, hopefully it'll stay that same diameter. And once everything gets worn in and it's all happy and it's well lubricated and taken care of, then you have many, many years of good service from, from the packing. So, you know, hoping to get to that point and eliminate uh, one issue. So, you know, I, I thought I would just give you a little uh, short video here to talk about this. I know I know some of you like the uh, the more nuts and bolts videos that talk about some of the things that we're doing. So I figured, um, you know, I'll just do this one. Uh, I would ask one question, though, is that uh, in the comments, uh, if there's something mechanical about the locomotive that you would like me to talk about, um, you know, any anything that, that strikes your fancy about 58 or the JNL Narragate Rail already wants to talk about, you know, just put it in the comments, and, uh, you know, if I have a chance, I might make a video and, and discuss it. Um, apologize for not making very many videos as of late. I've been working full-time on the short line railroad that I'm at as a, as a uh, track supervisor, and I just haven't had a lot of time to do things here. That's hopefully going to be changing here fairly soon, because I want to devote more time to developing the JNL Narrow Gauge as a functional tourist attraction. Well, I can only do that if I'm here, so uh, it's time to you know maybe go back to part time on the, on the short line and spend that time getting this place ready to go for you know operation next summer. So uh, at any rate, uh, good talking to you and uh, take care, everyone.